We kick it off in the welterweight amateur division. Brandon Lauterbach versus Andrew Schrader, two fighters who are making their amateur debut, Dave. Yeah, actually had a chance to talk to both of these guys leading up to the fight. The striker, Lauterbach versus the wrestler, Schrader. Should be an interesting matchup here coming up. Two young guys, two uh, up-and-coming camps. Interesting fight here. Without further ado, we send it back up inside the cage to Jazz Sakuro to bring out our first fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, our first fight of the evening takes place in the Pinnacle Fighting Championships Amateur Welterweight Division. Let's meet the fighters making his way to the cage. Please welcome Andrew Schrader. Andrew Schrader makes the walk for the first time coming through the Pinnacle FC banner. Hailing from uh, Bellevue, Pennsylvania, Kyle. Schrader making his debut, but he's no stranger to the martial arts. Definitely not a stranger to the mat for sure, as he's been wrestling since he was seven years old. Been training MMA for one year, but regardless, has spent some time on the ground, a pit graduate. 23 year old. Engineering degree, so smarter than all three of us put together. Absolutely, a graduate of Pittsburgh, University of Pitt graduate degree. I would say at least smarter than David. But I, I can't speak for Mr. Kavanaugh and myself. We are sharp tools in this little shed over here, David. We, we may not have any fights underway, but, but the verbal barbs have started with the Coyote and Dave McKinney as we look at Schrader getting greased up. Uh, as you can see, he's, he's a very focused as we spoke to him before the fight. Uh, no, make no question, Mr. Schrader wants to take this fight to the ground and use that wrestling background. And not only the background, but the height disparity that we have. And let's bring out Mr. Schrader's opponent. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome his opponent to the cage, Brandon Lauterbach. Brandon Lauterbach. Been training for 17 months, only 21 years old, Dave. Hales originally from Stockdale, PA, which he said is a little bit in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, coming out representing Octane MMA, another up and coming camp. I got to admit, I don't know a lot about these guys but a very, very confident and calm guy. Usually you, you amateur fighters you see have a lot of... Uh, and, and we take a look at the tail of the tape as we take a look, Kyle, at how Lauterbach and Schrader match up. Well, everything is pretty much straight up across the board. Both guys making their debut, 21 versus 23 years old. The big difference we have right here is six foot versus five eight. There's at least four inches of vertical height that we know about, not to mention the arm width. We don't have a length as far as reach, but... Lauterbach is definitely the taller fighter here. And Dave, as you mentioned, what do, what is important in this match that doesn't show up on the tail tape is the striking the Lauterbach, wants to keep it standing, and the wrestling background of Schrader. Yeah, and, and coming in with these amateur novice rules, of course, you got to figure that that's going to uh, favor Lauterbach if he does want to keep it standing because if Schrader gets to the ground, he can't strike on, to the head on the ground. Both fighters in the cage. We send it up, back up to Jasakuro for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, our first fight tonight is brought to you by Swiss Vail Auto Parts. Three rounds in the Pinnacle Fighting Championships Amateur Welterweight Division. And now introducing fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 169 pounds. He represents Dojo MMA fighting out of Bellevue, Pennsylvania. Tonight he makes his debut in the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Andrew Schrader. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, standing six feet tall, weighing in at 167 pounds, representing Octane MMA. He fights out of, uh, out of Charleroi, Pennsylvania. He is also making his amateur debut tonight, presenting Brendan Lauterbach. Your referee in charge, Mr. William Bookwalter. We're set to kick off Pinnacle FC7. Brandon Lauterbach in the red fight trunks. Andrew Schrader in the black. Bill Bookwalter, third man in the cage. I'm Ryan Kavanaugh. David McKinney and Kyle the Coyote Rozeski to my side, bringing you all the action here tonight from Pittsburgh, PA. Both fighters touch glove in the center of the cage. Oh, immediately. Double leg attempt by Schrader. Stuffed off by Lauterbach. Now we have a standing guillotine. guillotine here. Slam. Big slam by Schrader, but oh no, he's out of that guillotine now. Popped out, finds himself in the full guard here. And now we are under the PA 
amateur rules, the, uh, the, the division that we're in does not allow for shots to the head on the ground, so we are gonna see a lot of ground and pound to the body here. And Schrader, a, a big elbow to the body and a big punch to the canvas. We, yeah, th those sound good, but they don't really hurt too much, Ryan. <laughs> Now, before the fights, I did hear a conversation I think you had with Mr. Serb, who is our commissioner here in Pennsylvania, as to why these rules were instilled. Do you want to bring us up to speed on that? Absolutely. You know, he, he felt that from investigating other states, watching states like Ohio, he felt in positions just like this, it turned into what he framed a tough man contest. People were swinging wildly at the head. And I agree with Mr. Serb in the sense that this teaches them positioning. It teaches them to look for submissions. You gotta learn made. positioning in the in the gym, though. That's that's the big thing. Absolutely, Not but you know, fight. Kyle, I, I refer to you to, on this as a fighter. What is the difference between training in the gym and then when it's actually live and someone's trying to take your head off? Well, I, there, there is that obvious. You, I, I, I want to put it intensity trader. level. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, Lauterbach was going for a, what looked like a Kimura sweep, but now finds himself full mounted by Schrader. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the just the intensity level is very different as far as going out, and you never understand, especially being debut fighters like these guys are, the adrenaline dump. And what that is, is you get so excited to fight and so excited to compete in public that you actually psych yourself out to the point of making yourself tired. Lauterbach regains half guard, now looking to take the back of Schrader. Now see, we, we have the classic head and arm position, sometimes called the, the scarf by Schrader here, uh, looking to secure a top position on Lauterbach. And I believe Schrader actually mentioned the scarf. This is something they work on in the dojo that it would be a submission he's looking to hit in this match. We hear the 10 second bell. Uh, two minute rounds here in the amateur division. There's the bell, round number one in the books. And Dave, you and I spoke before this that you know not only the speed at which the, the fighters have to work, there's not a whole lot of time. And I think that puts a little extra stress on the judges to score the fight. How do you see round one? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, definitely you gotta, you gotta figure that one's gonna go to Schrader, if for nothing else, because he was on the top for you know, a minute 45 of the two minutes, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, Lauder back in his corner here, gonna have to figure out maybe a different game plan uh, to keep this one on his feet if he wants to pick up the win here. And Lauterbach looked like he had him in danger here at the start. Indeed, we, we saw that Armin Guillotine attempt right there, but he lost his grip as soon as they hit the ground with a nice slam by Schrader. And as David said, you know, you have to kind of scramble score these. Actually, Ryan, you said that. Um, I look at this as playground fights, and I'm not downplaying the division at all. Just the rules kind of allow for this, you know, who's on top is pretty much the guy who's winning like you would view a playground fight from back in the day. And perhaps there, there's, you know, I said it, it makes you work on your technique. Perhaps there's less technique because there's less tools in the toolbox. And, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, it, it actually teaches you probably bad habits, if nothing else, because I, you saw there Lauterbach didn't have to defend his face on the ground. Round two, Brandon Lauterbach in the red, Andrew Schrader in the black. Second round, three rounds, two minute action, amateur division. Lauterbach said he wanted to use the jab to keep him at bay. Let's see if he does a better job of that. Well, he needs to now. They're both breathing heavy, but I think he's got the worst part of the cardio so far. Great underhook, Schrader stuffing the, the single, single leg attempt, but Schrader follows through and completes. Now Schrader looking to pass the guard of one, Brandon Lauterbach. Lauterbach though, looking for what appears to be a very loose Kimura attempt. He's not gonna get it. His elbow's too low on the joint. He's got he's got to get the wrist control there too, I believe, Kyle. He, he needs to get the wrist control, not only that, but he needs to swim his arm over the top of the elbow of one Kevin Schrader. There, he finally let it go and dumped it. Schrader, once again, in the mount. This is the second time in this fight he's had Lauterbach mounted, and let's see what he can do here. Again, when you're mounted, though, you can't even strike to the body. A lot of times you're covering him up, so it leaves you very limited options as far as striking goes. See, th that's why I feel like I, I have to agree with David as much as I hate doing such. Ooh, Lauterbach now about to take the back of Schrader. Um, if you really just, sit, as the bottom man in a mount in these rules, you could just protect your ribs with your elbows and lay there until the ref stands you up. If you know that your guy, your fighting is not a submission expert, so to speak. Schrader just with a side headlock looking to drag him to the ground here. Absolutely. And, and this is that lack of technique you're talking about, David. These rules kind of limit the fighters here as far as what they're able to do. Schrader's done a good job of keeping Lauterbach on his heels. Nice Lauterbach can't get his offense going because he's so busy defending. Good uppercut by Schrader. Both guys taking huge breaths to the disengage. This is where Lauterbach wants to be, and you see Schrader now in the southpaw stands. Right hand by Lauterbach finds its home. There's not a lot of steam in these punches because he's afraid to commit as far as fearing the takedown. He's looking to defend that now, and he's doing that brilliantly with a couple of underhooks here. Now moving to the back of one Andrew Schrader. And another reason why that was easier to uh, defend is uh, Schrader didn't set that one up, didn't set and, that shot up. And you have to wonder if you're Lauterbach, do I go for a submission here? Do I try and steal this round by giving the judges something to think about? I'm threatening to finish, which has to be considered as we hit the final 10 seconds of round number two. Well, again, I feel like just, just because of the ruling of this, you have to give it to the guy who's on top. And thus far, this round, 
Lauterbach has shown more offense than Schrader, and I have to give it one to one now. First round going to Schrader, second to Lauterbach. Ka David, do you agree with Kyle's assessment? Yeah, very, very close. I mean, I don't like to give out a lot of 10, 10 rounds, especially in a two minute fight, but or two minute round, but uh, very close. If I had to make a decision, I would say Lauterbach in that round, just because of more offense. It was an interesting round. Schrader had the early takedown, but you didn't do much with it when he was on the ground. Now, I don't know if you guys saw that right there. Lauterbach just took a sip of water and almost puked it out. <laughs> um, if you look at the way he's breathing here, this is another thing that I don't really agree with as far as these rule systems. These fighters need to have the experience of the three minute rounds. I mean, you're, you're really just putting training wheels on and not taking them off until it's too late. You know, and I would rather not be thrown down a steep hill on a bike until I knew how to ride it. And here we see some of the replays. Schrader will not let go of that head. Just looks like an alligator trying to drag a cattle in, <laughs> in into the river. That was. And you see maybe the lack of uh, of grappling from Lauterbach could have easily taken his back there. I think both of these guys have a little bit of schooling and education yet, as far as the uh, jiu-jitsu aspect of MMA. But we are seeing some decent striking from Lauterbach and some decent wrestling from Trader. Bill Bookwater has got the water cleaned up, brings the fighters together, third and final round. What may be the decisive and deciding round here. And what both my broadcast partners have it ruled 1 1. Good nice uppercut by Lauderdale. Oh. Lauderback, rather. Lauderback now finding it's confidence. He's starting to actually put some sting on these punches. I was going to comment earlier about how they're just kind of going through the motions with, with, with his strikes, but now he's committing to them and throwing some steam behind oh, him. Oh, nice right eats hand. a right Schrader. hand for his efforts. Right by Schrader. Schrader bowling Short forward, right pushing forward with the right hand. Both fighters very tired. Well, you could see it just where the shoulders are over the knees, you know that you're, you're tired. Another great sprawl by Lauterbach, though. Fighters back up to their feet off the shot attempt by Schrader. Lauterbach keeps trying to spin to take the back of Schrader, but not getting there in time. Schrader's corner begging for knees here. Now, the answers. The one thing I've noticed is we haven't had a lot of 50-50 position like, like we are seeing here right now. Both men kind of fighting for that underhook against the cage. We have not seen much fence work here. It just, it's been open mat and, and slow stalking. Lauterbach using his length well, and we're back to that schoolboy side. Headlock Lauterbach with the left hand. Now, I, I think Lauterbach's too tired to finish this with strikes, but this is still anybody's fight. I mean, we could point this out here. here. Kyle, I think he's scoring points, though. You know, he's exactly. landing some Absolutely. punches and scoring points. And, and how hard they are at this point, I'm not sure it matters as long as he's connecting. It, it's, it's become rather evident to me that neither fighter really has it left in the tank to finish the other one. So now it's pretty much going to be who's going to control the last 35 seconds of this fight. Schrader, Schrader looking desperately looking for a takedown, David. Yeah, looking for that inside single. Lauterbach now pushing... Schrader up against the cage as we come inside the final 30 seconds of this fight. Good, close, competitive fight. You know, a lot of, a lot of room to, for improvement for these guys here, but still very competitive and a lot of heart shown from both guys. No quit in either guy. Schroeder hanging on as Lauterbach continu continues to land some lefts. We hit the final 10 seconds of this three round fight. Lauterbach winning this Let's round here it. with aggression. And Lauterbach may be best served not to let the takedown up. Exactly. We are going to the judges, three rounds in the book. Brandon Lauterbach and Andrew Schrader. We take a look at and or Brandon Lauterbach, and now Andrew Schrader. David, did that man Andrew Schrader do enough to win this fight? You know what, I don't think so. I know he, he definitely lost the third round, and Kyle and I both gave the second round to Lauterbach. Let's see if the judges agree. And right now, the cardio is, is the tail of the fight. Uh, we, we saw the action kind of wane until the end, but kudos to both these fighters making their debut under the duress and pressure of making your, your first public fight. Uh, they, they both did very well, and, and I'm actually very pleased with the way this went down, despite what the mainstream might think about the rules and what I think about the rules. This is a very good experience for both these gentlemen. Yeah, very competitive. Uh, Lauterbach, you know, Schrader used up a lot of energy, it appeared, in the first round and a half, securing those takedowns and keeping Lauterbach on the ground. And I, I believe he used up a lot of that gas tank, which Lauter, Lauterbach was able to exploit and then take advantage on the feet. I, I would have to agree with both of you that the last two rounds went to Lauterbach and he's gonna get the judge's decision here. And uh, this will not help Schrader's cause at all, sitting down in the cage while Lauterbach's still standing. If, if you want to make an impression and the scorecards have yet to be rendered, you want to stand up and throw your hands in the air. And actually I just saw the scorecard to my left be filled out a little bit more after that sit down happens, so that could play a factor in scoring here. Pinnacle FC matchmaker, Dave Quick, talking it over with Lauterbach. You see coaches from Octane MMA. There's Dean Smith from the Dojo MMA. Trader definitely looks to be exhausted 
after this three round fight. A little bit marked up too, uh, it's, it's the, the telltale signs of the jab of one Brandon Lauterbach, who did use his height and reach advantage very, very swimmingly, keeping it at one Andrew Schrader at bay for most of the fight. Jassa Guro, the fourth man of our broadcast, was in the ring, had the official scorecards. He's back out, and Jazz enters the second time. Referee Bill Bookwalter bringing the fighters together. We send it back up to Jazz to make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of true amateur action, we do go to the judges' scorecards for your winner. We do have a split decision. All three judges scored 29-28, and your winner, Andrew Schrader. Let's give it up for Brandon Lauterback from Octane MMA in Charleroi, Pennsylvania. All right, I'm here with Andrew Schrader from Dean Smith's Dojo in Pittsburgh. He's a Pitt Johnstown wrestler coming in here making his debut. Andrew, you came in here, you imposed your will, you did some fine wrestling in here, put the fight where you wanted it. How you feeling right now, my man? Great. Tired, but great. You look a little tired. Anyone you'd like to thank, I'll make this easy on you. I'd like to thank uh, Dean Smith and everybody else at Dean's Dojo, uh, my family for coming across the state to watch me, and all my friends and coworkers that came to cheer me on. All right, one more time, let's give it up for Andrew Schrader from Dean Smith's Dojo. One and oh. Good job, buddy. 